This video will cover the basic differences between Proxim's WDS and Mesh solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a uh, WDS link. Uh, WDS creates a link between two access points over their radio interfaces, uh, either A or B, uh, 8211A, 8211BG, N, whatever. Uh, this link relays traffic from one AP that does not have Ethernet connectivity to a second access point that does have Ethernet connectivity. Uh, it's going to look something like this. So this is a fairly generic WDS link setup, uh, bus topology, if you will. So what we have here is the PC server, whatever you want to call this, the one that's located in the backbone. And of course, you have your access points and you have your clients that, of course, want to go from here to here. So you have your Ethernet drop and wherever all this is located. So you want to connect all of these access points together, but because of lack of Ethernet connectivity, there's just no way to do so. So basic WDS, you just connect one of the access points that's closest to the Ethernet drop, and then you just set up WDS. This access point will talk with this one and vice versa. And then this one will talk to this one and vice versa. So now this client over here is going to have access to the server over here. And if you also have a program that way, he can also communicate you know, to this client over here, just like a normal network, because all of these are part of the same network unless you don't want them to be, and that's a that's totally different configuration. But uh, once again, this is a fairly simple bus topology, and this is WDS at its basic. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the hub and spoke topology. Uh, in this case, what we have is we have an access point in the middle, and then we have these access points which are off to the side. Remember, you could pretty much do whatever you want, but unlike a bus where all of the access points kind of connected one by one to each other if anywhere the link is broken the chain itself is going to break in a hub and spoke as you can see it's kind of all independent on its own and you can kind of spread it out now in the ap 8000s and 8100s you have the ability using the vaps to even extend that where you could have this guy talking to this guy but then you could also kind of branch it out we have another guy talking to here and then another access point to, to another access point. Uh, we're talking about no more than six deep. Now, all of these are also going to service clients. Now, one thing to remember is that the deeper you go in your WS configuration, the slower your throughput is going to be. So we're talking about maybe 50, 60 percent if you're this guy over here, the six guy in line. So uh, that's something to consider. But uh, this is only available on the AP8000. 800 and the AP8100, the AP4700 only kind of give you this type of configuration where it's kind of a, a bus topology or a hub and spoke topology. The AP4700 and, and the AP8000 family, uh, which includes the AP8000, AP800, and the AP8100 all support WDS. Uh, the AP8100 and AP8000 do have something that's called legacy mode, so you have the ability to actually WDS between a AP4000 and a AP8000 or 8100, but of course you're going to be limited to uh, 8211A or 8211G or B speeds, not the 8211N speeds. Now regarding uh, WDS and the uh, outside use, um, the IEEE 8211 standard, which defines the specification for WDS, addresses LAN indoor operation. While the operation of the WDS link should logically work in the same fashion regardless of indoor-outdoor environment, Proxim recommends the outdoor implementation, especially long distances and point-to-multipoint configuration. Uh, you use the Proxim outdoor point-to-point -point and point-to-multiport family as they are engineered specifically for outdoor usage. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Mesh now. Now, Mesh is just a dynamic version of WDS. Both use the same over-the-air mechanism. In a Mesh network, APs use their wireless interfaces as a backhaul to the rest of the network. 
access points connected directly to the wired infrastructure called portals. Now the mesh APs are the outer ones that are connected to the portals. They relay the packets to other mesh access points to reach the portal. Dynamically determine the best route over multiple hops. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a typical mesh installation. Okay, so uh, this is what a typical uh, mesh topology kind of looks like. So what we have here is we have two portals, one up here and then one over here, and both of them are connected to the same back end. So basically, because it's dynamic, what happens is that each one of these mesh APs, they know that each mesh AP exists. They also know that the mesh portal exists. So kind of speaking, so let's just say that you have all of these mesh APs that are connected to this over here and this one connected over here. For instance, if this mesh portal goes away, these two know that either this one or this one exists. And because these guys are connected to this portal, they will automatically find a way out, so to speak, out to the network. So uh, as I call it, more of a live and breathe in type environment compared to WDS, where if one goes down, then pretty much it, it either goes down or it just stays down. Uh, if you're in a bus, the whole link will go down. Or if you're kind of like in the our hybrid environment, hub and spoke, it's going to uh, just that one radio is going to go down. Now, once again, in this particular case, if one portal goes down, it will find its way out dynamically and it keeps all this information in the tables. That's generically a fairly basic mesh. Right, one thing to remember is that mesh is only supported by the AP4000 family. So that includes the AP4000, AP4000 MR, MRLR, uh, the 4900 radios, but uh, the AP700 does not, uh, and the AP8000 family, the 8800, 8100, do not support the mesh feature. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.